Today we're building towers. Building with blocks is not only fun, but it helps your child develop many early childhood skills. It helps them learn things like counting, and also to define attributes like color, shape, and size. Colorful blocks, Duplo, Lego, dry erase markers, dice, giant dice. In this activity, your child will be building with blocks. You can ask them to separate by color, shape, size. The sky is the limit. All right, guys, come on in here. Whoa. See all the fun stuff on the table? Everybody yeah. have a seat? Yeah. You know what we're gonna do today? Mm -hmm. what? We what? are gonna build some towers. We are gonna make patterns out of blocks and do so many what? fun things. Are you guys ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so everybody, Choose what you want to build with first. Can you come up with a color pattern with the Legos, kind of like these blocks? I did a pattern. Nice, Rach. Pink. Yeah, pink. I like your stacking. Stop. You have an idea? Stop. Don't look. Okay, I'll try not to look. Let's see how high we can build here. Yeah. Can I look at it? What colors did you use? Boy, this looks kind of Christmassy. I like it. Benjamin, what are you building? I'm building with something else. Nice. Yeah. How many did you do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven blocks? I'm gonna do more. How what high I'm do you doing? think we can build it? Nice, Rach. Seventeen. Look at my tower. No. Great, Rachel. I hope it's whoa. whoa. Oh. I think it's gonna. Ah! One, two, three, four. Oh! <laughs> it's where I need those dices. <laughs> In our first activity, it was so much fun just to ask my kids to free build, to use whatever they wanted to, and to come up with different ways to stack them. Yeah, Are you gonna try to go seven, even higher than you did before? Four, five, six, seven, eight. Sister, can he help you? He wants to help. Okay. Benjamin, what are you working on? I have no clue. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now, do you have Where? any more to add? What happened? So we have 12. 13, 14, 15, 16. So that's 17. <gasps> eight. Oh, we have eight. Like a few more. Nineteen. Oh gonna blow. my goodness. Nineteen. It's fine. It's, it's fine. fine. It's going to like. Do it like more. More. 21! Rachel, 22. you're in a precarious predicament. <laughs> it's breaking. 24. Whoa! Oh. Let's Blanket. try again. In our second activity, we played a game, which was a lot of fun for the kids. We took a dice and we rolled it and we stacked the number of blocks according to what number was rolled. That helps develop cardinality. This is also a great way for you as a parent to teach your children that it's not all about winning. Playing the game is just as much fun too. You like games? Yeah! I do too. Okay, this is a really fun game. So I need everybody to choose one dice out of that bin right there. Look at your blocks and you can put them in one through 10 order and see what you're missing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make a race to the top, okay? The race to get to the number 10. So you're gonna take your dice and you're gonna roll it. Oh, see I started with a one. So I would put one block out in front. I got then that. you roll again and I would add how many more blocks? How many dots do you see on there, Silas? Three, so I would add three blocks. So I would go one, two, and three. Whoever gets to 10 first wins. I got a one. You get to stack five blocks. Five. All right, now roll your dice again and see what number you get. So add how many blocks? Good. Oh man. Mom, I Did almost, Rachel win? Yeah, I, I got five. I won. Three, I won. I won. Rachel no, won. I won. No. She raced to ten. I won. No. All right, you want to do it again? Do it the yep. wall. Now Silas had a little bit of trouble with this game because he wasn't winning. We all know that it's hard to lose sometimes, but this is a great way for you as a parent to teach them that it's not always about winning. It's about learning and doing the activity as well. We're all gonna roll at the same time. So first roll, you ready? Go. I'm gonna see it. Whoa. Oh man. We all have five. So you're tied. We're all gonna roll it again. Ready? Go. Go for I won, I won. I win. No, I win. I got first. I did it. Do it again, Silas. Let's see if we get to 10. Rachel's blow. Silas. 
It's okay you that you look, so I won. Hey, sometimes we win, sometimes dun, we lose. It's dun, okay, dun, right? Dun, dun, dun. In our next activity, I ask my kids to take their blocks and write numbers 1 through 10 on them. This is a great way for your child to practice writing their numbers. Then, to practice subitizing, I had them write dots right next to the number so that when they look at the dots, they know immediately how many there are in that set. Okay guys, I want you to take a pen one. or one of these markers and I want you to write 1 through 10 on your blocks. Do we start then, from the top one? You can start any place you want. Okay, okay. And then you can put some dots on another side that show how many there are. Okay. One. Yep. So one, one dot. dot, good. One dot, Three, two, two dots. Four dots. Number three. Rachel took it a step further and decided that she wanted to draw tally marks on her blocks. This was a great way to introduce counting by fives to your children. Oh, oh Rachel, I like your tally marks. One, two, You're learning that in school, aren't you? The last thing we did was we built a tall, tall tower. Every child loves doing this. This was a really fun thing for my kids because they got to engage with one another. It helped them talk and reason through things. They had to learn to cooperate as they talked about how they wanted to build their tower. Then they also sorted the blocks by size. Can you build a really high tower? Yeah. Which one do you want to start with at the bottom? Let's start first. Wait, you need more I stable at the bottom. Way. I think so too. Start That's with a good this idea, sis. At the bottom. Start Silas. with the big one at the bottom. We don't need Silas. That's not long enough. See, we need. What I'm trying to tell you is we can use all the square ones and keep going up until we can use these. That's pieces. a good idea. Wait, can you put them Oh, yeah, we could do that. That's we some good work that. together. Uh, and I'll put another one. This one. Oh, two squares. Two. Oh, okay. Bend them until we can sort them. And then here's the last one. Getting them ready to go. And now can you pick two long pieces? I get another oh, no, one. What do we know the one? What is this? I'm gonna put a piece on too. Okay? Once my children started building their tower, it also helped develop spatial awareness as they had to decide which blocks fit together correctly. Oh, Sass, can we take that one off? Because I think there might be one. Oh, that might not be. Yeah, that is right. It's a big two. We can make a two big piece. Yes! Yeah! There we go. It doesn't have to be even all the way up. Remember buildings, they can be different sizes. So you can keep going, it doesn't, there you go. Oh, Silas, it's taller than you now. You know how skyscrapers, they have different points? Now that works good. Wow. Our building fell down. At the very end, what child doesn't like to knock over their tower? Silas got right on in there and knocked their tall tower over. I was like, 10 more, and then oh. Building towers is fantastic open play for your kids. It helps them develop creativity and also solidify those early math skills. It helps them learn things like fine motor skills, and if they're playing with siblings, they have to learn to cooperate and take turns. Who knew that building towers would be so much fun and also educational? Kids love to explore spaces in the world around them. Today we're going to help your kids develop their spatial awareness by building something really fun. And you guys are chomping. We're going to build a fort. Pillows or cushions, blankets or sheets, chairs, clothespins or binder clips, broomstick or another item to prop something up, string lights, rope, string, popcorn and snacks, stuffed animals or whatever else your children would like to decorate with. Okay guys, come on in here. I have something really, really fun for us to do today. Do you want to know what it is? Yeah. We are going to build a fort. I always okay? know. But I'm going to need your help. We need everybody to put our ideas together and come up with some really cool ways that we can build it. Do you guys think you can do it? Yeah. All right, here we go. Building a fort is so much fun for all ages. For older children, they get to help secure things, and it also helps develop their higher level of thinking for skills like geometry. So kind of what I was thinking is starting with these chairs, and maybe we could put something over it, but I need someone to help me figure out what can we put over it. I know, this blanket. We could try different things. For younger children, it helps develop their sense of space. They get to come up with ideas and also gives them a good sense of direction. Hey, I got, I got something. 
something. They need you got food. something, Silas? Yeah. Maybe they can use those clips to hold their food? blanket in place. Thank you. Can oh, you can use these. Yep. Good thinking, Rach. I'm the glue. Silas, are you under it? Yeah, what? And, <gasps> and you poke your head out. Mom, one more. Mom, can I use these? Some string? Sure. What do you want to put that on? What is this? You need to attach for? something. You know what? I need help with Silas. Do you think we should put something under our tent? Yeah. Something comfortable to sit on. What can we use? We have yeah. two mats, so you can even we do it this put way two. and put two side by well, side. What, what do you think? Here. And it can come out. Out. Sorry. And Silas, what would also be comfortable Incoming. behind your back, yeah, Rachel? Pillow. Yeah. Pillow. Some pillows. I wonder what this can be for. See? Mom, can you yeah, that's that? another clip. Can we put something under it to maybe help it stay up? What do you think? Yeah. Do we have anything? What do you think would work? Could this work? We could try it, yeah. Benjamin. Hold it something. What do you think? I have an idea. Can I have this pool? So we can. That's a good thought, yes. Rach. I have an idea. Hang on. I'm going to come in back. Be <laughs> careful. We don't knock each other. I'm going to come in backwards with it. Trial and error is a great way for kids to understand how the real world works. They get to problem solve and come up with solutions together. Like, will the sheet fit over the chairs? Can we take this broom and maybe prop the sheet up? Like, maybe like that? No. Nice. See if it'll hold it in place. Wait, we need a clip. You need a clip? Wait, yeah. I only get one. It's just one over here. They love working together. It helps them communicate and come up with solutions to their problems. Fort building builds all of those skills in children. Do you like that makes it higher? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think we need maybe some of that string. Benjamin, can you hand Mom with some of that string? And after you're done, I want to add this blanket. Yeah. Can you give me the scissors under so here? On them that... So we have a yeah. nice, ooh, so nice cut it. and soft. And Guys, this will be fun for a movie, night, won't it? Yes. Hold on, will that stay? Yeah, yeah that will stay as long as no one else And what if we just tuck it in? Yeah. And what we I did. So we put one on the other side? It's not what I need all by I think my you own. You can tuck it in. It's not what I need it's all by my own. own. You did it all by yourself. Good job, Silas. <laughs> it's coming. Oh, what I did. Clip it, too. You can do it on this. Great idea. You can and you can slide it between there if you need it more in the middle. You're right. Yep, because that'll go all the way down. Describing spatial movement for your kids while they're building the fort helps them understand things like through, on top of, underneath. It also lets them explore their world around them. You have so many neat places to crawl through, guys. You can crawl through here and go under. I know what I can make. under it. <laughs> you want me to decorate with these? Okay. That's a good idea. Do you want me to clip them? Okay, like that. Is I that... like what we're doing. I like it too. This Thank you for helping me. This is actually kind of fun. It is a lot of fun, isn't it? It needs like an yeah. S. It does look like an S. Like in my name. Yes, just like Silas. It looks like a license. Thank you. Well, I wish you could go through. <laughs> Mama can crawl through, but remember, don't go on top of the sheets because what would happen to them? They would collapse. They would come falling down. <gasps> Ooh, Silas climbing through. He's gonna jump on Come on under here with us. Play. Yay! Okay. How about use some Silas. lights to decorate? But everybody work together. I need everybody to help me. Okay. Because they might That's be kind of tangled. Benjamin, see if you can clip using those clips and we can clip it to the outside of our, our tent. Hey, should we put the lights on the top? Make the lights go on all the way down this side of the okay up here look if you look under it's all making a rainbow and it's really cool this under. is very cool do you want to take a nap underneath here yes yes oh, wait my puppy would you like to go get a couple puppies it's not a little animal. oh your favorite animals it can I be a nice home a for them so gather up your blankets pillows and cushions and get exploring spatial awareness with fort building who knew that such a long time treasured activity would be such an educational one? Are you guys ready for movie night? Yeah! All right, here's your popcorn. Can you pop, pass that to brother? Thank you. Now, what are you guys watching? Mother, Mother Goose Club! Club. Ooh, that sounds like fun. Mm -hmm. Enjoy your movie time.
video, we're going to show you how to make a delicious rainbow fruit snack that's good for your body and your brain. <laughs> Hi, I'm Noah, and this is my uncle Brandon. We're making rainbow fruit snacks. This is more than just a healthy snack. It's also a fun and brain-boosting activity. When kids copy a pattern, like the colors in the rainbow, they get smarter at math. And when they put fruit on skewers, they strengthen finger muscles, which they need for writing. To make these snacks, you'll need wooden skewers, a couple of plates, a large plate or platter to build the rainbow on, and fruit. You could choose whatever fruits you like. Just pick one for each color. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Here's what we chose. Strawberries for red, orange slices for orange, pineapple chunks for yellow, green grapes, blueberries, and purple grapes. Here's a plate and some skewers. They have sharp points, so be very careful. Which color comes first in the rainbow? Red, so we should start with the strawberries. Now we carefully poke the skewer through. The safest way is to lay the fruit on the plate and poke the skewer down. Then, push the fruit up. Great! Now what color comes after red? Orange! Next comes yellow. Now green. Next we'll do blueberries for blue. They're kind of small, so let's use three. What's our last color? Purple! Great job! Let's put them on the big plate and make some more. <laughs> Gonna make red strawberries for the rainbow. What's your favorite fruit? I like grapes. What about you? Mm, I have to go with pi pineapple and oranges. One, three. One more. This is fun. I can't wait to eat some. Noah, why do you think fruits are different colors? I think fruits are different colors because different fruits with different colors have different vitamins. Mmm, that's a good answer. Mmm, like blueberries bring me blueberry happiness. Right, right. Not sadness, although they're blue. Let's make a double rainbow. Oh, it's gonna be awesome. Beautiful. I say beautiful. Oh, uh, can we all with these bloopers here? Yes. Wolf it. Yeah, we'll flip. it. Great. Aww. Look, we made a fruit rainbow. Yum! Now comes the best part. Let's eat! Yes! Just remember that grapes and other large chunks of fruit can be choking hazards for young children. So it's best to cut the fruit pieces small and to cut the grapes in half before eating. Perfect pineapples. Wanna take oh. a bowl. I love grapes. Show other Mother Goose Club fans your rainbow snacks. Hashtag photos and videos Mother Goose Club. 
And we listen to all your feedback, so please, comment below. Bye! I'm gonna enjoy this. So bust a move, and bust a move, and, <laughs> and action. So it's great, sorry. And to cut the grapes in halves, you got it. it's not even a word. So it's bet. Ah. You got this. With him? <laughs> <laughs> We're in the sky. Okay. Are they still like cameraing me so I still have to smile? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. What? Why are you upset? Nobody. Wait, did I skip anything? No. Really? <laughs> I am so. Here we go, looking at the camera because we're still rolling. And. I got a little distracted. <laughs> if you guys are like my kids, we have so much stuff, especially toys. You can take those things and turn them into fun, simple math activities, such as sorting. Simply take some of your things, gather them together, and decide what attributes you want to sort them by. You already have so many things lying around your house. Simply gather those things together and get to sorting. I'm going to show you a simple way to make math activities fun for your children. This activity could not be simpler. You need to look around your house and find what items need to be sorted. It can be things like manipulatives that we use for simple math things, like the pom-poms, or toys that you have, or you could even bring in some laundry and get your kids to help you sort laundry. Next, you need to decide what you want to sort the items by. What attributes do they have? What color? What shape? What size? Or ask your kids what they want to sort the items by. Let their creativity go and have fun with it. Okay guys, today we are going to do some sorting. Now sorting can be by I, shape why, or by... Why put them in here? Yeah. Or what could, else could Color. we sort What sizes? By color. <gasps> and by sizes? If they're big or if they're small. Okay, this is by color. I'm a new color. Okay, and this, this is by, by shape. And that's by sizes down there by you, Benjamin. Uh-oh. Sorting involves being able to see what the likes and differences are between two items. You can ask your kids, what is the same about these two items? Or what's different about them? Really get their brains thinking. Medium! Good job. Nice. Oh, Ooh, I like the large pom poms. I forget, how many sides does a rectangle have? One, no, four. One, two, three. Good. I'm trying to find a little slide. Another one. Another rectangle. Hey, Silas, we haven't found any squares yet. For size Wait, squares. Go walk. What? What is it? I can do it. Oh, what's it? Oh, nice. You could even create a Venn diagram by using two hula hoops and talking about what qualities do they have that they share. Sometimes sorting can be a little difficult and Mama wants to show you that sometimes they can share things. So see these blocks right here? You see how like these are the same like size right here? But are they the same color? No. Are they the same shape, Benjamin? Yes. Yeah, they're the same shape, so they have that in common. This over here, we can put this shape and this Wait, shape. they're not the same. But guess what? See how these overlap each other? See how these circles touch each other? Yes. So if it shares two characteristics, Bye. like the shape and the color, it can go in between. Uh, this one. Yeah. And because they're the same shape and the same color. Good job. That's what we're trying to find. My kids had a lot of fun sorting today. They got to use things like toys that they had around the house, some beads, some pom-poms. They even got to use their stuffed animals and sort them by different attributes. Okay, boys, now that you've learned all about sorting, I need some helpers. Wow. We need to clean our room. Look at these animals that are everywhere. Now, remember all the different things you can so use for sorting? Yeah. The different characteristics you use, color. We can put them in. Or kind of animal, or size, whatever you want to do. So what do you guys want to separate your animals by? I want to separate it by dogs. Okay. By dogs? Which bin is going to be the dogs? What else can we separate them by? Wasps! You know what? We can be the dwarf in 
So let's put safari animals in the orange. So safari animals in the orange, puppies in the green. Puppy! We can do, what can go in the pink one? Ooh! Birds, let's put the birds in the pink one. Are you ready to use your sorting skills to clean up? Yeah! All right, on your mark, get set, go! So sorting is really fun because I think kids naturally like to analyze what categories they need to go into. So it's fun for them to take their toys, the beads, the pom-poms, sort them by shape, by size, by color. They also had a lot of fun choosing what they wanted to sort their animals by. I think the Venn diagram was a little difficult for these guys, and it might have been a little difficult for me to explain to them. So it took them a minute to really understand that they could share more than one or two characteristics. Sorting opportunities abound in your home. It helps the child really get their mind thinking creatively about these things. Also, you could make a fun game out of it. Set a timer, ask the kids to quickly sort the items and clean up the room. It's a win-win for all. What parent doesn't love that? Welcome back everyone. In today's video, we'll be doing a read aloud to driving in my car. And then we're gonna show you a really fun, cool activity that you can do with your kids that puts a spotlight on their imagination and creativity. Stay tuned until the end. During this series, we will provide you with some tips and tricks that will give you and your kids an opportunity to improve your love of reading and include it in your everyday life. So, without further ado, let's go. Today's book is an adaptation of the popular Mother Goose Club song, Driving In My Car. My kids love to read these books. We know the songs, it helps us engage with the characters, and we love to act out the stories. Okay guys, so today we have Driving In My Car by our beloved Harry and Sana Jo. Are you guys ready to embark on this journey? Yeah! Yes! Excellent, excellent, excellent. Hello, Mary. What are you doing today? Mary is getting ready to go for a drive. First, she buckles her seatbelt. How about that? You guys know that one, right? Isla, sometimes you need to be told twice. Oh, I don't. Let's go! Let's go! Lennon, what's that say? Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> that a girl. Driving. Driving in my car. Feeling, Feeling like a star. Like a star. Of the street. You know this song. I can do it better. Do, Down do, the street in my car. Great, now do it on this page. Driving. Driving, driving in, in my car. car. Turn, Turn the, the handlebar. Bar. Speeding, Speeding down, the street down the street in my, in my car. car. Daily reading engages the brain by using listening skills, imagination, and critical thinking. A little bit of reading every day will give you an opportunity to exercise all of those skills and create a love of learning for life. Hurry before it gets dark. Have a fun drive, Mary. Have a fun drive, Mary. We love you. You gotta blow kisses. You gonna blow kisses to Mary? Can you can you wink at Mary? Can you show us how you wink? Show us how you do it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. When you finish a book, go back and ask your kids if they like to act it out. Daily reading can be a safe space for them to learn, play, increase their imagination, and build confidence, particularly for young readers. Ah, look, it's the page that gives us all the tips and tricks to bring this book to life. We can get active, we can talk, and we can watch the Driving In My Car video on YouTube, and we can sing the song when we read. Bringing a book to life is an activity that can inspire the love of reading for a lifetime. And playing pretend is one of the easiest things you can do. Sometimes the hardest part about playing pretend is just coming up with the concept. But you can encourage your kids to play the characters in the story or take on some of the scenarios that they read about. Driving in my car is a great example of this as it was adapted from the Mother Goose Club music video. Today, we're gonna play pretend and make our own version of the music video. Grab your speakers and turn on the music video and let your kids become the star of their own music video. Toy car, speaker, sunglasses, outfits, jewelry, all that type of stuff. Copy of a Driving In My Car book, and most importantly, imagination. Dad, I want to drive a car just like me when we die. Well, you might be a little young to drive a car, but I'm feeling if we use our imagination, we might be able to drive a car right here in the living room. Whoa, Whoa look at that. Go for it, guys.
stopping. Let's go, we're at the mall. The mall. Thanks for joining us for our Read Aloud today. If you want to make your own Driving in My Car music video, be sure to check out our main Mother Goose Club YouTube channel for the Driving in My Car music video. You can find the link for the YouTube channel in the description. Also, what are some of your favorite books to read to your kids? Leave it in the comments. Thanks again for watching. Today we're going to talk about patterns. Does your child like music, colors, or shapes? Most children do and it shows that they have an early inclination and a curiosity toward early math skills. Mathematical concepts start with pattern recognition. Think about your child's first toys. They're colorful, they're made of shapes, you stack them, you sort them. All of these things set the foundation for early pattern concepts. Today we're gonna to explore patterns by using colors, shapes, and even stacks. Okay guys, we have something really cool to do for you guys today. We are gonna do patterns. Silas, do you know what a pattern is? What do you see? What color is first? What do you see first? Yellow. Yellow, yellow. and then what color? Orange. 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 It repeats yellow. itself. Yellow. That's right, patterns repeat themselves. So you can make your own pattern. It can be like this. How many colors do you see there? Purple. Pink, orange. Right, that's right. Good job, Silas. Pink. All right, you guys ready to have fun? Yeah. 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 All right, well, let's make our pattern. So take your pipe cleaner. I like it. Ooh, Rachel, you have a rainbow going on over I here, like it looks it. like. What pattern are you doing? Red and orange. All right. So red, orange, red, orange. Patterns help children answer the question, what comes next? It's super helpful in social situations, especially when a child's in a classroom. They have to know, what do I need to do when I have a question? They need to raise their hand and wait for the teacher to answer them. Knowing what's expected and the patterns of things help them navigate the world that they live in. Okay guys, we're gonna play a game. I am going to reach into this bowl and I'm going to make a pattern and you are going to guess what's next. So Silas, tell me what shape that is. A rectangle. You're right, it's a rectangle. So I'm gonna put a purple rectangle down. Then I'm gonna put a, what circle. Color? a circle, a blue circle down. And let's see, hmm, if I'm doing a pattern and a pattern repeats itself, what comes next? What comes next after the purple rectangle? Blue. Find it for me, put it in place. So cool. Good job, buddy. Good job. I'm excited too, because I can't wait to see what this looks like. Okay, Silas, we're gonna do something really fun. We're gonna do window patterns. I'm going to start the pattern, and I'm gonna put one on here, and I need you to spray it so it sticks. Can you spray that? Give it one good spray. Here, go further back. Stand further back. Spray it down. There you go. Good. Look. It's sticking. All right, let's create a pattern. So let's see, let's do this one next. Spray that for me. Oh, it's already kind of sticking, good. All right, let's see, what should we do? This one next? Okay, Okay. now I'm gonna let you tell me what comes next. If we're gonna do the pattern and it repeats itself, what would come next? What do you see first in that row? Purple. Mm -hmm. So why don't you find the shape? <laughs> good job. There you go. All right, what comes next? Orange. Okay, oh, your favorite. All right. Good job, buddy. You want to do new pattern? Since we ran out of room, you start your own pattern. What do you want to start with? You can try it. You want to do it? Ooh, we haven't done a yellow circle yet. Good. I think that's enough water. I think it only needs one squirt of water, okay, on each shape. I think it'll stay. This one. So cool. You did good, buddy. <laughs> All right, I'm ready, go. <laughs> Are you gonna do it? Patterns are arrangements of things that repeat in a logical way. Those arrangements of colors, shapes, sounds, images are very important for young kids and contribute heavily to their early math understanding. In the way that we speak, Think about the way that sounds and words are made up. 
All of those are very important skills in a child's early development. Okay guys, now that you know how to make patterns, we're gonna do something yummy. We are gonna make snack patterns. You can make your own snacks and make a pattern with them. Yummy. Using any of these foods here that you see. All right, go. Watermelon, oh. straw, strawberry, cucumber. Oh, that looks yummy. And then I did orange cucumber. Oh, yum. They look great, guys. I want more strawberries. Do you wanna reach them? It's a squirrel! I have to snack on one. <laughs> Can I go ahead and show oh, yeah. eating? Watermelon in there too. Watermelon's so good. It's delicious. Mm. Patterns are not just linear, they're non-linear as well. You can see patterns in nature when you look at a leaf or a flower or a tree. So it was very exciting for my children today to learn that a mandala as it radiates out from the center is also part of pattern making. Okay guys, so now that you know what a pattern is, we are going to take these plates and instead of making a pattern in a line, we are gonna make a pattern that starts from a center point. See how my pattern starts in the center? Mm -hmm. And then it goes out like this, but you can see can you hold it that the pattern, mm -hmm, see these beautiful colors? They start from a center point and it goes outward. So you can make a pattern as it's going outward. All right, you guys ready? It's a diamond. Nice, you're right, it is. Look at mine. It looks good and will taste good. Woohoo! Nice mandala, Rachel. <laughs> you want to eat yours? Don't eat yet. Yeah. They need to see more. Here, wait for Rachel. Oh, Let me take a picture of it. You want a picture of it? Today was a lot of fun getting to do patterns with my kids. I think they enjoyed it too, actually getting to do some hands-on pattern work and not just seeing it, but actually getting to do it for themselves. For Silas, getting to build those fine motor skills is really important as he gets to pick up the cereal and put that on the little pipe cleaner. For Rachel and Benjamin, it was neat that they got to see that patterns aren't just linear, that it's something that can radiate out as they built those mandalas. And what kid doesn't like snacks? If your kid's like mine, they're asking for snacks every 30 seconds of the day. So getting to build those snack trays, make them all colorful, and then getting the beautiful reward of eating them at the end was absolutely delicious. For a long time, scientists have been baffled by the smallness of the atom. Hey, I'm Jesse. I have three boys, Diego, Zion, and Kingston. I know that reading is important, that's why I encourage them to do it as much as possible. One way to do that is by placing books all over the house. I'll show you how. <laughs> and I stir the water just a little bit. Put the chicken on. Put the chicken on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I love cooking. And sometimes my boys follow me into the kitchen. And sometimes they're helpful. And sometimes they're not. So I got to find ways to keep them occupied so I can cook. How do I do that? Bam, a stack of books right next to me. I get to cook dinner and I'm happy. They get to read their books and they're happy and dinner gets done. So then after the water stirs a little bit, we put it on the chicken and then we dance a little bit around the kitchen. A little bit on the kitchen. <laughs> awesome. What about yours, Kingston? A bear. A bear? That's cool. This one's got cool colors in it. Here's the deal. The more kids see books, the better they feel about them. It's all about familiarity. And if you place books all around the house, they'll become familiar fast. Putting a basket of books in the bathroom is one of the best ways to squeeze in more reading time. You can even get some waterproof bath books. Show your kids that you like to pick up books wherever you are, and they'll learn to do the same. This one's a no-brainer. You gotta have books next to the bed. It makes it so much easier to grab them at bedtime. You can get fancy containers, but for me, a good old shoe box works just fine. Cause it bit my fingers so. When reading becomes a part of the routine, books become an important part of kids' lives. My kids love to wake me and my wife up super early, especially on the weekends. So we told them they had to read a book before they can come in. And that just got us 10 extra minutes of shut-eye. Don't forget to keep books in the car. 
It's a great way to squeeze in some extra learning, whether you're going on a long trip to grandma's house or just a quick trip to the store. Let's say I have a ton of laundry to fold. Well, I'll put a stack of books next to me, and if Diego's hanging out with me, I'll have him read a book, and when I'm done folding all this laundry, I'll sit down with him and we'll read a book together. Sometimes your kid will bring you a book at a random time. And let's face it, as parents, life gets busy. But you know, once in a while, just stop what you're doing, drop to the floor, and read with them. There you go. Books everywhere means reading everywhere, and that's a good thing. Mother Goose Club wants to know how you boost book time at your place. So share pictures and videos by hashtagging them Mother Goose Club. Prefer to type your comments? Let us know what's on your mind below. And don't forget to subscribe to be the first to hear about new videos. Until next time, keep stacking those books. See ya. And sometimes these little guys follow in here. Ugh. Books become an important part of kids' lives. Zion, you know you weren't supposed to be up here. My kids love to wake up <clears throat> Here's a secret weapon. Our kids love to wake our... We're almost there, Zion. How many times? We're gonna keep on doing this. My kids love to wake... Jeez. Louise. Until next time, keep those stack... It's this mic in front of me. is making me nervous. That was a... You're so good. Maybe they're <laughs> And until next time... It's a great, great, or a quick grocery run to. Ugh, 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 my brain just stopped. Let's do it one more time. Yes. I can't read. Just look at the pictures. Is one of the best ways to. Ugh. Mother Goose Club wants to know how you boost, boost how you boost. Wow, that's gonna be a weird one. Boost. Does that, does that sound funny? Or is it just me? My Latino accents coming in really strong there. Hashtag videos and pictures. Ugh. Share pictures and videos by hashtagging Mother Goose Club. <laughs> Mother. <laughs> <laughs>Today we're playing ABC Scavenger Hunt. It's a great way to get your kids practicing some early literacy skills as well as getting them moving and having a great time. Playful learning is so important to the development and today we're gonna show you how with this literacy game. ABC letters, CVC and sight word cards, both sizes, ABC floor mats, large and small, chalk. Start by hiding letter or word cards inside or outside the house and let the games begin. Keep your eyes closed. Now, open your eyes. Okay, all right, so take a look around and each of you guys collect as many cards as you can. There are cards everywhere, literally. Just get whatever you can get. That's good, keep going, keep getting more, keep getting more. You make your own, make your own stack. Here you go, make a stack up. There are a few more out here. Is there one back there? Oh, nice, good catch, man. If the girls found a letter, they would either shout it out, match it to the floor tiles, or even try to come up with a word that began with that letter. Q! Do you have the letter Q? What, do you, what letter do you have, Lennon? You have the letter V. V! Now find the letter, you have to match the letter. V, yeah. v, v, You find the letter Q. No, 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 that's an A, that's an A. You know what? That looks, it's very, very close. It looks, it looks very similar. Yeah, there you go. Good job. And let's separate them into letters and words, okay? So, you guys, you guys come right here. So the words, let's put them right here. So the first word, din, tap, fan, map. So this is a word, so this goes here. All the letters here, put them over here. Isla, so what I want you to do is, I want you to pick whatever word you want and go through there and let's see if you can put it together and make a word out of it. You have all your letters no in this. Sentence. You know what? You can do a sentence. You probably won't be able to do it with those words because you don't have any verbs in there. If the girls found a word, we could either challenge them to build that word with floor tiles or to come up with another word that rhymes. Eventually, we decided to take our ABC scavenger hunt game outside. Once we got outside, we took our sidewalk chalk and we wrote words on the tiles. Then when the girls did their scavenger hunt, they brought the words that they found and they matched them with the words on the tile. Good job. Atta girl. Good job, Lynn. Uh, yeah. What's the word? 
That is wag. Glenn. Wag, like okay. a dag wag. wags, a dog wags his tail. Wag. Yeah, see, right here. Right there. Nope, other way. Sometimes, as you know, the little ones and their siblings like to compete, but this gave them an opportunity to work together as a team today. Can you help me find Rand? No, don't pick these up. Right here. Here you go, put Dan down. Put Dan, show where it is. Right here. There you go. That's a dick. All right, cool. With Isla being at one level as a reader and with Lennon being at another level as a pre-reader, it gave him an opportunity for Isla to share a little bit of what she knows with her sister. And her sister was appreciative of it. And that's really cool to see. It was really nice to get the girls outside, get their bodies moving, and get them engaged. Obviously, anytime they're learning and having fun is a win-win for everyone. The ABC Scavenger Hunt is an exciting way to get everyone moving, building letter and word recognition, and playing together as a family. Mother Goose Club Playhouse!